hello guys welcome back to my channel so today we are going to discuss a very basic yet confusing topic so we are going to discuss today about omphalocele omphalocele versus gastrocytosis okay uh, so we will be discussing the difference between these two conditions of omphalocele and gastrocytosis you we already know that these both of these are actually fetal anterior abdominal wall defect okay both of these are fetal anterior wall anterior abdominal wall defect but what's the difference between these two so first of all we will see omphalocele what happens in omphalocele is there is a midline defect see there is a midline defect in the fetal anterior abdominal wall at the level of the umbilical region okay there is a anterior midline umbilical region defect through which these intra abdominal contents like in this case the small bowel loops are seen herniating if the defect is larger than other viscera like liver spleen can also herniate okay so see uh, the herniated small bowel loops are actually covered by a membrane these are covered by the peritoneum the wartens jelly and the amnion and the umbilical cord insertion level is abnormal the umbilical cord is seen inserting at the apex of this herniated mass okay so uh, we have seen that omphalocele is actually a midline defect and the abdominal wall umbilical region the herniation is of generally small bowel loops the liver the spleen the herniated contents are actually covered by a membrane and the umbilical cord insertion is abnormal it is getting inserted at the apex of the herniated mass okay next thing is the gastrocytosis where the defect is not in the midline but in the in the para umbilical region usually in the right side so the defect is on the right para umbilical region through which small bowel loops are seen herniating see the insertion of the cord is at its normal location in the umbilical region of the fetus and see the herniated bowel loops are not covered by any membrane okay there is no membrane covering these small bowel loops they are just freely floating in this amniotic fluid okay so uh, we have understood the basic difference between the omphalocele and the gastrocytosis let's just see the ultrasound pictures like in this picture see this is the fetal abdomen and this is the herniated thing which is getting herniated from a midline defect and the umbilical cord is seen inserting in the membrane at the apex of this herniated mass okay and while in case of gastrocytosis see this is the site of the insertion of the umbilical cord and we are seeing a mass herniating here this is in the right para umbilical region here also there is a defect through which the small bowel loops are getting herniated also observe that the herniated mass has a very regular shape okay see the outlining of this herniated thing is very defined in cases of omphalocele this is because these are covered by a membrane while in case of gastrocytosis the outline is not very well defined see the outline is not very well defined because there is no covering covering the herniated mass okay so uh, just we have understood the basic difference just for the theoretical purpose let's see the other differences between omphalocele and gastrocytosis so this is omphalocele versus gastrocytosis so omphalocele is the midline defect while gastrocytosis is the right paramedian defect okay next the defect can be small 
or large in case of omphalocele while they are usually smaller like 2 to 4 cm size defect in gastrocytes. Third point, the herniated thing can be liver or bowel loops while in gastrocytes they are generally bowel loops. Okay. In case of omphalocele, there is a covering membrane present, okay, while in case of gastrocytes, there is no covering membrane, okay. The cord insertion is abnormal because it is attaching at the apex of the mass, while cord insertion in cases of gastrocytes is normal. The herniated content, herniated contents are actually contained by a membrane, while in gastrocytes they are just freely floating. Okay. Next is, uh, in cases of omphalocele, the fetus has generally other anomalies like aneuploidy or chromosomal anomalies. While in cases of gastrocytes, there can be other GI anomalies but not chromosomal aneuploidies. Okay, GI anomalies can be there. Omphalocele's are generally male is to female fetus ratio is 1 is to 1 while gastrocytes is more common in males. Okay, um... Omphalocele risk increases with increasing maternal age while gastrocytes is more common in young females. Next is the uh, markers like a maternal serum alpha fetoprotein is raised in omphalocele but more markedly raised in gastrocytes okay and finally uh, umbilical uh, amniotic fluid acetylcholine esterase levels are usually absent in omphalocele while they are present in gastrocytes okay so uh, we have learned the basic difference between these omphalocele and gastrocytes I think I have uh, made the topic quite easy for you. Um, just don't get confused. Just remember these two basic pictures of the midline defect of the herniated bowel loops or viscera of the covering membrane and the attachment of the umbilical cord. Okay. I uh, So I guess everything is uh, clear now. So uh, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for getting notifications about my new videos also you can ask your doubts in the comment section below and also you can suggest me on what topics you want me to make videos on okay so thank you so much thank you everyone